Welcome back to Element a Day in May and a week of lesser known elements. Today's element is technetium, element 43. And like niobium and the others so far this week, it's a transition metal with a fairly high melting point. Like rhenium, day two of this week, it was an elusive element missing from the periodic table for some time. But unlike the other metals, technetium is actually an artificially created element, hence its name technetium, after the Greek word technetos, which means artificial. Most of the other transition metals have been found by analyzing a ton of rocks through spectral analysis. This is a process that measures the electromagnetic frequencies in matter, and over the years, a bunch of transition metals were discovered this way because they all have their own unique footprint. But technetium, it's a little different. It has its own unique footprint still, yes, but it's only been found a few times naturally as a spontaneous fission of uranium. It's not an element you're going to find hanging out in the rocks with its fellow metals, and that's actually because it's a radioactive metal. And other elements in that area of the periodic table, like rhenium and niobium, both have radioactive isotopes as well, but it's mostly artificially made. But why? Like, why make this particular element when there's a bunch around it that seems perfectly viable for things? I want to relate this back to current events a little, because I really liked exploring earlier this week how elements relate to the here and now, and people and places, and exist outside of the bubble, or rectangle, I should say, on a pretty chart. And we're in luck because I found a press release issued just last week that highlights technetium. Let's talk about radio pharmaceuticals. What? Okay, it turns out the radioisotope technetium-99 accounted for over 50% of the market for radio pharmaceuticals last year as a primary element in diagnostic tests. But what does this mean? This is not a widely known and discussed industry, but it is huge, at least economically, which makes it huge because in our world, money is a big deal. The title of the article, to give you an idea of how huge this sector is, is Radio Pharmaceutical Market to Attain a Value of 7,430.8 million US dollars by 2024, says TMR. This is speculation by a market research company, but you get the idea. But why is this such a big industry? What does it actually do? Well, the subtitle of the article gives it all away. It says, Growing demand for diagnostic tests with rising chronic diseases assures growth. I'll explain. Basically, what this means is the radio pharmaceutical market provides tests that contain technetium-99 to diagnose diseases. And because chronic disease in our world is on the rise, more people are in need of these tests. And because chronic disease probably isn't slowing down, neither is the profit for the industry that makes these tests. Now, this isn't a conspiracy. It's just the way things are. Whether there's more attention and acknowledgement of chronic disease, or we are getting sicker as a global society, I'll let you debate that one. For now, thank you for watching Element a Day in May. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Same time, same place. Element a Day in May.